Hello YouTube, Robert Alvarez the Psychic Witch, also known as Mr. Lighting and a Fan. And yes, I have my lighting and I have my fan. I might turn it off a little, a little bit because I'm feeling a little chilly even with the pashmina. But I digress. Right now the time is approximately 8 p.m. in 2 minutes Eastern Time. And the date is Wednesday, excuse me, Wednesday, December 23rd, 2020. I almost said October, can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> no, the date is indeed Wednesday, December 23rd, 2020. For some of you in YouTube land, it is the day before the night before Christmas. Anyway, I am happy to continue this more than a walkthrough series of videos starring the Mystic Male Tarot, created, written, and illustrated, or rather just created by John C. Jennison Jr. I am really happy. You know, I've said this before, and I will happily say this again. I am normally not a fan of Majors Only Tarot decks, but I've been really, really, really getting into this Majors Only Tarot deck. And for the record, I actually did a casting of the cards once. It was the same day that I received it. Um, but I do look forward to using this tarot deck um, in future readings. But in the meantime, I'm going to have Drake more commonly known as my awesome audiovisual person for my YouTube videos, do a close-up of the front of the box. This is the card that depicts uh, Justice. This is the Justice card, which we're getting to. I actually want to see if I can complete the entire deck. I mean, it is a Majors Only deck after all. Um, before the conclusion of December 2020. We'll see. And now I'm going to have him do a close-up of the back of the box, which I love because at the bottom it has the logo for Astonishing Queer Tales, which is the name of Mr. Jennison Jr.'s um, company. Astonishing Queer Tales, I love that. I was actually visiting his um, Etsy shop recently, and, and I saw these, just so many wonderful things. I'm like, yes, I want, I want, I want, I want. Anyway, um, so now we're gonna be focusing on the Wheel of Fortune, but first I'm gonna have my awesome audiovisual person do a close-up, I'm telling you, I love, love, love the back of this card design. I really do. The crescent moons, the Ouroboros, which is the snake with its tail in its mouth, and, and the purple background. I love this. And here is the Wheel of Fortune. And I love this Wheel of Fortune. It is interesting how in many tarot decks, even tarot decks that do not have an ancient Egyptian theme, the ancient Egyptian iconography that's often depicted on a Wheel of Fortune card is still present, and this is no exception. Um, and I really do love, um, and, and I'm going to have my awesome audiovisual person see if he can do another close-up of the details on the wheel. Because if you look really closely, you see all of these different symbols on the, on the rim of the wheel. Everything from astrological symbols to other arcane and magically oriented symbols. And I really dig that. I, I, I really dig that um, when I see that in, in Wheel of Fortune cards and other tarot decks as well. But in the meantime, let me read to you what Mr. Jennison Jr. wrote about the Wheel of Fortune card. And just a reminder, um, in Mr. Jennison Jr.'s Little White Booklet, which has the Magician card on the cover, um, when the card is reversed, it's referred to as its shadow side. Um, which would imply that when the card is upright, as in right side up, it is, re it is representing the, the light side of the card. Anyway, so, let me put on my eyes. I really do get a kick out of saying that. And I should be receiving my very first pair of prescription glasses in more than 30 years. Um, either next week or the first week of January 2021, and they are stunning. I am, they're very much me. So I'm looking forward to them, I really am. Um, I, I will admit that I would have preferred having um, non-line bifocals, you know, where you see the line. Like I, I preferred the not having the line, but that would have been an extra $200, which I did not have at the time. And you know, I'll deal with the bifocals, it's okay. Anyway. So, Wheel of Fortune, Trump 10, or Key 10, which is astrologically aligned with the planet Jupiter. Luck is on your side as you reach a turning point in your life. Life has many ups and downs. Be prepared to change for the better. 
I could have sworn I heard a, a scratching noise. I'm sorry. I just got distracted for a moment. Uh, anyway, um, the shadow side is disappointment in an outcome. Be aware of your resistance to change or breaking cycles that have aided you in the past. I'm going to read that again because the light side and the shadow side of this card are very deep. Luck is on your side as you reach a turning point in your life. Life has many ups and downs. Be prepared to change for the better. The shadow side is disappointment and an outcome. Be aware of your resistance to change or breaking cycles that have aided you in the past. I want to talk a little bit about this card, and it's funny because I'm not going to talk about this card as an in intuitive insights. I'm actually going to talk about this card from uh, a, as a jumping off point from what Mr. Jennison Jr. wrote. So, um, one of the things that really struck me is the shadow side is disappointment and an outcome. And I remember years ago, I was going, th I was looking through a catalog, and it was an actual physical paper catalog, and there was a book uh, in the catalog that was written by um, the late and great Dr. Wayne W. Dyer. And what he wrote um, was that the source of upset is an attachment to an outcome that is unrealized. Now, he said it a little bit more succinctly than that, succinctly than that. Um, however, I find it interesting that that, that was touched upon in this card. And, um, you know, sometimes we are disappointed in an outcome. You know, an outcome that was unexpected, an outcome that was not what we wanted at all. And, and of course, I also talk about, I, I cannot help but talk about the goddess Fortuna. You know, I'm often... I've often said that Isis Fortuna is the goddess of the sacred tarot, and by extension, the goddess of divination. And, you know, Fortuna happens to be a beloved goddess of Cheryl, who's the, the owner of the, who's the living goddess who owns notions and potions. And I have the honor and pleasure of being one of their in-store readers. And there is a statue of Fortuna in, um, in the store, in, in the window. And, um, you know, I remember one day we had a bit of a lull in the store and, and Cheryl, I almost said Fortuna, Cheryl and I were talking about Fortuna. And, you know, she's often said that over the years, what she was saying was that over the years, there are customers that have come into the store and they've, they've asked if the store has a statue of Fortuna who's not blindfolded. And what she said was that, no. She just tells the customers no. But the thing of it, and, and the thing with Fortuna for Cheryl, because Fortuna is Cheryl's personal goddess, is that she actually does not like seeing Fortuna um, unblindfolded. Because Fortuna is one of those goddesses that gives and takes away. And she gives and takes away without knowing who you are. It's not like, oh, you're black, I'm going to give you. Or, you're white, I'm going to take away from you. She doesn't do that. She doesn't play that game. She's like, I'm giving to you because I'm giving to you. I'm taking away from you because I'm taking away from you. And I don't know Fortuna as well as Cheryl does. However, intuitively, the sense that I'm getting from Fortuna is that she really doesn't care who you are. Like, she doesn't feel that you're more worthy or less worthy because of X and Y and Z. She's just like, well, I'm giving to you today. That don't mean I'm not going to give to you tomorrow. That doesn't mean I am going to give to you tomorrow. It just means I'm giving to you right now and right here. So, here you go. Booyah. And tomorrow is another story. You know, or Fortuna may be like, you know what? I'm not giving to you today. That doesn't mean I don't love you. That doesn't mean I, I, don't, think you're, I don't think bad of you. It just means I'm not giving to you today. In other words, don't be a greedy bitch. But that's my personal interpretation. <laughs> Although Cheryl may be like, everything you said was right on. We'll soon see. But I, I definitely have always said, and, 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 through, and through the conversations I've had about Fortuna uh, with Cheryl, with Fortuna the goddess with Cheryl, um, is that Fortuna is not always going to give. And she's not always going to take away. 
And what the Wheel of Fortune, generally speaking in a reading, means that this is something that is going to pass, or is probably going to pass, but if it does not come to pass, it just means that it will not happen today. It might happen another day. We'll see. You know? And it is ironic, you know, given that Fortuna is often depicted as blindfolded and she's saying, we'll see. Because sometimes, you just need to wait. It reminds me of something else that I read in a book years ago, and I, I wish, I read so many great things in so many great books, and I often forget to write that down. And I think that's going to be one of my one of my resumed or resurrected practices in 2021. And after all, it is a hierophant year, um, and that is um, God answers our prayers with three responses: yes, no, or wait. And sometimes the great goddess says yes, and sometimes the great goddess says no, and sometimes the great goddess says wait. And you know what? Sometimes the waiting is necessary. Sometimes it can be very challenging, and I must admit, one of the things that I've struggled with these last two years is, rem is cultivating, or rather resurrecting for myself, a sense of patience. And it could be because I'm 50, going on 51, it could be I, I almost died last year three times, it could be for a number of different reasons. But what it is for me is that now more than ever I know how imperative it is to cultivate patience. And sometimes the great goddess or God or the Lord Most High or whomever or the name of whomever in whom you believe will say to you, wait. Even through a reading with the Sacred Tower. YouTube, as always, thank you so much for honoring who I am and what I do. And thank you very much to John C. Jennison Jr. for creating and writing and illustrating the Mystic Male Tarot. As a gay man, it means a lot to me to see representation in my tarot decks and representation in tarot decks in general. And I really love that there are, that this is one of a number of tarot decks that either feature gay men or feature um, gay men in addition to other members of the LGBTQIA plus community. But as a gay man, I definitely love using tarot decks that primarily feature gay male imagery. And it, it does mean a lot to me because as, as the Michelle Swan Graham, Swan of Dreamers on YouTube, and I have often said, both online and off, representation matters. And of course, thank you to all of you in YouTube land for all the likes, all the comments, all the shares, even on social media platforms that I no longer use, like Facebook. And of course, thank you for subscribing to my YouTube channel. I was very happy the other day. I saw that I was more than halfway to 600 subscribers. <laughs> and thank you to all of you who have been scheduling your sessions. I am so looking forward to continuing to offer readings, um, whether they are in person or by phone or by video or by email over the next few days, weeks, months, and years. And of course, stay tuned for the next video.